Introductory Chemistry Separation of a Mixture by Fractional Crystallization In this experiment we will separate a mixture of copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate and salicylic acid. Let's take a look at those two compounds to start with. Copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate is a blue crystalline salt and salicylic acid is a white solid organic compound. We will start with a mixture of the two, separate this mixture and determine the percent composition of it. Take a look at the structures. Copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate, which I may refer to simply as CSP for sake of time, is very much an ionic compound. It's charged. Ionic compounds have high solubility in water because water is very polar and ionic salts are, well, even more polar than polar. They're ionic and so water dissolves many ionic compounds and copper 2 sulfate is no exception. Salicyclic acid, on the other hand, is an organic compound it's made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. It has a small amount of polarity in it, the hydroxyl groups, but most of the molecule is nonpolar carbon and hydrogen. And as a result, it will have a very low solubility in water. Take a look at the graph below. This solubility graph shows the temperature from 0 to 70 degrees on the x-axis in degrees Celsius. The left-hand y-axis shows the solubility of copper 2-sulfate pentahydrate, that is grams of it, per 100 grams of water. At 0 degrees C, the solubility is about 24-25 grams, and it rises rather quickly with the temperature at 70 degrees C. Notice that the solubility exceeds 100 grams of CSP per 100 grams of water. By comparison, on the right axis, we have the solubility of salicylic acid in grams per 100 grams of water. Near zero, it's, well, essentially zero, and it rises slowly with temperature increase, reaching a maximum of about 1.5 grams of salicylic acid per 100 grams of water at 70 degrees C. So simply based on the solubility characteristics, we should be able to separate these two compounds. We'll do it by crystallization. Let's take a look at this reaction. We'll start by weighing about two and a half grams of salicylic acid copper two sulfate pentahydrate mixture. Here's the mixture. Because it's a powder, we don't need a spatula to transfer it. We can get good control just by tapping as I'm doing here. You want to record the mass of CSP, salicylic acid mixture, 2.48 grams, looks good. Next we want to dissolve this. We'll use 50 milliliters of distilled water. chunky in the bottom in the center there. I'll break that up with a polypropylene stir rod. We're also going to add a milliliter of 3 molar sulfuric acid and the acid just prevents any precipitate that might form from carbonates. If you had carbonates in solution, copper to carbonates insoluble, but the acid will liberate the carbonate as CO2 just in the event that it were present. Want to heat this up and cover it with a watch glass. We don't want to evaporate the solvent while we're dissolving the solids. In the meantime, we're going to weigh a 100 mil beaker and it will filter paper that we'll use to collect the salicylic acid crystals in the filtration step that's upcoming. 66.28 grams. 
looks like the solids have all dissolved. I can tell that because the solution is clear. If there were some insoluble impurities, the filtration would pick it up in any case. Now we want to let that cool slowly at this point. We want to keep the beaker covered to eliminate solvent loss by evaporation. And it's important now that we don't stir or disturb or cool this quickly. We could speed up the process by doing that, but what happens is rapid crystallization results in small crystals, and they're more difficult to filter. And furthermore, any impurities that might be present are often trapped, or the word is occluded, in the solid. If, on the other hand, we cool slowly, the crystals will glow larger and purer. You see, during slow crystallization, the salicylic acid molecules leaving solution will preferentially fit into the crystal lattice of a solid of their own chemical kind. That would be the existing salicylic acid. Once the mixture has cooled to near room temperature, we put it in an ice bath for 5 or 10 minutes to bring the temperature down to near zero Celsius and that's simply to maximize the amount of salicylic acid that we can crystallize from solution. In fact you can see it's not a true solution there's solids present below the supernatant blue CSP we can see white solids. We have no reason to be concerned that we will lose copper sulfate from solution during this uh, cooling in the ice bath. If you recall, we weighed out approximately two and a half grams of our mixture. We combined that with 50 milliliters, or that's approximately 50 grams of water. So that is equivalent to about five grams of mixture per 100 milliliters or grams of water. And if you look at our solubility table here, that would occur right around here somewhere. Whereas we see that the solubility limit for copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate is about approximately, I'll say, 25 grams of CSP per 100 grams of water. So even if all of our mixture was copper sulfate pentahydrate, we'd still be well below the solubility limit of 25 grams. We just won't lose any in the crystallization step. So our slurry has sat in the ice bath for about 10 minutes now. Looks like a pretty good collection of solid salicylic acid. Kind of looks like a, a slushy. We're going to separate this by vacuum filtration. So make sure that you clamp your vacuum Erlenmeyer to a retort stand, otherwise it will fall over. Got a green rubber gasket to make a seal between the Erlenmeyer and the Buchner. We take our pre-weighed filter paper and make sure it sits flat, not crinkled or puckered, or solids will get under it. We'll seat that paper with a bit of water. Whenever you pour solids onto a Buchner funnel, Pour them quickly, as quickly as you can without spilling it, so that you cover the entire surface of the filter paper. You don't want a clump in the middle, you want it evenly spread over the surface. And similarly, when you wash that precipitate, spread water over the entire surface. Don't spray it on. This is the way it's done industrially. It's called plug flow on vacuum filtration systems. Notice I'm going to take the lid off the wash bottle. Don't spray it. Rather pour it over the entire surface. It's the best way to clean a precipitate. Alright, so we got to release our vacuum. I would normally close the valve first, but I just wanted you to hear the suction on that line. Next, we're going to quantitatively transfer, that means to transfer all of it into the beaker that we set weighed earlier. I'll speed this up a bit because it's tedious. Alright, so we're going to let that air dry and we'll get a final mass on it tomorrow. 
Now the filtrate will transfer that to a beaker and boil it down on a hot plate to about 15 milliliters. Get rid of the bulk of the water. We'll crank that temperature up pretty high so we don't have to wait too, too long. While we're waiting, we might as well weigh another beaker and filter paper for the CSP salt that we're going to collect later. So record that mass, 65.15 grams beaker plus filter paper. So our solution has boiled down to 15 mils or less. We're now going to add 15 milliliters of ethanol. And CSP has low solubility in ethanol, so it will come out of solution. We have to get it out of solution, otherwise we won't collect it. Now coming out quickly like this, you realize we won't be able to grow large crystals, but the assumption is that we have eliminated most of the impurities. We've removed the salicylic acid. We have to get the CSP out of solution in order to weigh it. We'll finish up with the ice bath before uh, vacuum filtration. Here it's been sitting in the ice bath for 10 minutes. And now our final step is vacuum filtration. Here's our pre-weighed filter paper. Make sure it seats properly, flat. This time we're going to wet it with ethanol rather than water. Remember, water dissolves CSP. We don't want to dissolve our precipitate. Once again, try and get the solids evenly distributed over the entire surface of the filter paper. Don't make a cone in the center. And likewise with the wash, spread the wash evenly over the entire surface. One final rinse. Alright, there's our CSP product. We're going to quantitatively transfer that to our pre-weighed beaker and we'll let it air dry overnight before getting a final weighing. And we'll speed this one up too. Alright, we'll weigh those tomorrow. So now it's tomorrow. Here's our final masses salicyclic acid, beaker plus filter paper, 66.67 grams. CSP, filter paper, and beaker, 67.10 grams. You want to record those masses. For your data and results, please enter them into the table that's listed in your lab procedure. There's a worked example here that you can follow. Don't expect to get 100% recovery. Inevitably you'll get less than 100% because some solutes will remain dissolved in the, in the filtrate. Now if this were an industrial process, the filtrate is called the mother liquor and the mother liquor is recirculated back to the front of the process and fresh mixture is added. So the filtrate can be cycled through the process many times. After many cycles, a buildup of impurities might necessitate that the filtrate or the mother liquor be somehow be cleaned or perhaps dumped and start afresh. But we can get many cycles out of it and we get higher yields. In the lab, we're doing what's called a batch process. That's a single uh, throughput, and we're going to have higher losses. And that ends our experiment on crystallization.